You see, this is something that the Baltimore Ravens really never do. They don't want any parts of it. They don't want to be associated or affiliated with it whatsoever. And that thing is cutting draft picks. Ravens love their draft picks. They covet their draft picks. They admire those draft picks. And we continue to hear Eric DeCosta always say around draft time, hey, I want even more draft picks. But this year... They had a select amount of draft picks, and they drafted their guys, but now one of them has been cut. Uh, at the cornerback position, the Ravens were deep, but at the same time, they weren't really quality deep. They had a lot of question marks and still have some question marks at the cornerback position. Uh, Marlon Humphrey, they of course had him. Rocky Seen was expected to be that number two guy, and they were still trying to figure out that number three role. But in the meantime, in the meanwhile, they drafted Caillou Blue Kelly. They drafted him in the fifth round this year. And throughout training camp, we had heard about him struggling a little bit, but I was like, oh, we're not worried about that. It's training camp. It's not a big deal. But then in the preseason, we saw him struggle big time. And it was like, oh, this is rough, but he's a rookie. He's a fifth round rookie. So you got to have realistic expectations with a fifth round rookie at the cornerback position. Probably one of the, if not the hardest position to play, especially on defense. So let's let's temper our expectations with the young rookie. But the Ravens were like, no, we're not tempering anything because they cut him. They released him. They waived him. So that put Kyle Blue Kelly uh, on the waiver wire. So that means any team could put in a claim for Caillou Blue Kelly. And that's exactly what happened. The Seattle Seahawks, they claim Caillou Blue Kelly, and now Seattle, as long as he remains on the roster until then, that just made that Seattle Seahawks and Baltimore Ravens game just a little bit more interesting. But with Caillou Blue Kelly, you, you, you got to think that the Baltimore Ravens, they've obviously been seeing him in practice. They've been seeing him in training camp and whatnot. So you got to feel like they felt some type of way about Caillou Blue Kelly. And they may have seen his struggles because they took the risk. We don't know if they wanted to bring him back and put him on a practice squad. We just I, I, I don't know that. Maybe they did. Maybe they didn't. I don't know. But they did feel comfortable enough to let him hit the waiver wire so let him uh possibly go to another team they were comfortable enough to take that risk so they obviously did not value him like that and that's unfortunate man because again this is somebody who you spent some draft capital on you selected him from his college and it's like hey you want to be a baltimore raven all right come through uh, and it just it didn't work out and you know this is something that the ravens just they do not like doing at all but then, if um, my, my guy Kevin Ostriker, he brought out a very, very interesting point about the Baltimore Ravens, specifically Eric DaCosta, and specifically the Ravens' fifth round draft picks. Y'all, ha have a listen. My guy uh, Kevin Ostriker said, Eric DaCosta has a solid drafting record, but the fifth round has been a nightmare zone. So he then went and talked about the fifth round picks under Eric DaCosta. Eric DaCosta has been Ravens general manager since the 2019 season. So here we go. In 2019, his fifth round pick was Dalen Mack, and he played in a total of one game for the Baltimore Ravens. In 2021, his fifth round pick was Sean Wade. He played in a total of zero games for the Baltimore Ravens. And also in 2021, another fifth round pick uh, was Dalen Hayes. He played in a total of one game for the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, in 2021 as well, he had another fifth round pick. That was Ben Mason. He played in a total of zero games for the Baltimore Ravens. In 2023, he drafted Caillou Blue Kelly, and he played in a total of zero games for the Baltimore Ravens. Now, this year, obviously, the, the year hasn't started yet, so that number is a bit skewed, but it's not looking like he's going to play any games for the Baltimore Ravens. Crazier things have happened. You never know. He could be released from the Seahawks, and Ravens could bring him back, but that's to be determined. So, Eric DaCosta in the fifth round, <laughs> that's pretty scary. And that's like extremely scary. Like, like my guy Kevin Ostriker said, it's just been a nightmare zone. A nightmare zone. But, hey, not all bad, though, because he said on, the only exception has been Broderick Washington, who he drafted in the 2020 draft, and he's played in 39 games, and he just got that nice contract extension. So it's looking like he's going to be uh, replacing Calais Campbell in his role a bit. So we'll see how that goes. But, yeah, Caillou Blue Kelly is a Raven no more. 
Now, what's interesting about these Baltimore Ravens, especially recently, um, cutting draft picks is something that they just they don't like doing. They hardly ever do it. They never want to do it. They, they, they just this is a forbidden zone for them. But recently, it seems like um, they've been sort of putting their foot in this area a lot. Well, not a lot, but a lot more than they normally would. Uh, because this year, they cut Caillou Blue Kelly, fifth round pick. Last year, they had 11 picks. Whew, that's, a, that's a lot of picks. And they used all 11 picks. They drafted 11 players. And I was like, wow. But their last selection, Tyler Beatty, he hung around for a tiny bit. But Ravens ended up cutting him, too. They cut him, too. And he ended up going to the Broncos. And he, unfortunately, was just released uh, just yesterday. Uh, then we go to 2021. And we just talked about it. Yeah, he drafted Rashad Bateman, Adafi Wade, Cleveland, uh, Stevens, Wallace. Uh, and that was Sean Wade, Dalen Hayes, and Ben Mason. So all the, the, the fifth-round picks, the last three picks of that draft, all ended up getting cut. Well, Sean Wade got traded, but they're all gone. Um, so it's been, it's been something. It's been something. And um, Eric DaCosta, th this lets us know a couple of things about Eric DaCosta. Um, good and bad, I guess. Because good, in a sense, not necessarily for the player, but I guess for... The team for Eric DaCosta, I guess he's looking at it like, look, I'm, I'm not going to waste time uh, if I feel like. And, and, but see, it's tricky because they're rookies. Not every rookie comes into the league and, and they look like a pro right away. Things take time, not even in just a couple of months, not even just a year, not even just a couple of years. Sometimes it takes two, three years for these rookies to get it. It takes time for, for players to develop. Um, but Eric DaCosta, I guess for him, he's like, you know what? My, my patience is short. And with these guys, it's been extremely short. And obviously, every situation is different. Not every situation is the same. Maybe it's because of the, 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 the roster and a lack of flexibility in certain, uh, in certain roster spots. Um, that could be it. Maybe it's just that he feels like those rookies, they won't be able to contribute. But then you think about it like if it is that they can't contribute, why did you draft them in the first place? And again, it's, it's, it's a very, very tricky situation because, again, not every single pick is the same. Uh, when we go down this list uh, of those draft picks, uh, we think about it. Uh, Caillou Blue Kelly, they drafted him. They, they needed some more depth at corner. They had Marlon Humphrey. They hadn't signed Rocky Sin yet. They had Pepe Williams. They had Jalen Alma Davis. Uh, both of those two have been dealing with injuries. And it's like, all right, Caillou Blue Kelly, he could be a depth guy. He doesn't have to be a starter, so there's no pressure on him. You can bring him in, develop him, go, th and that could be straight. But it didn't happen. Uh, then you go last year, Tyler Beatty. Tyler Beatty, a running back. He can be a return man. You got J.K. Dobbins coming back from injury. You got Gus Edwards coming back from injury. You got Justice Hill coming back from injury. You got all these guys that were hurt. Uh, so Tyler Beatty, he can come in and, and maybe be the cleanup guy. Like we expect those guys to, be, to, to come back and be healthy. But just in case we got Tyler Beatty, nope. Didn't end up working itself out. Then Sean Wade, of course, would need, always need more quality corner depth. Uh, with Dalen Hayes, pass rusher. Dalen Dip Hayes, that's what we called him because in the preseason he looked really good. And we're thinking, all right, Dalen Dip Hayes, he's going to be doing some stuff. But injuries happen and it just never worked out. Ravens cut their ties. Ben Mason, when they drafted Ben Mason, I was thinking, uh oh, well, I guess Pat Ricard may be on his way out. They drafted a fullback that can move a little bit. They drafted a fullback that can catch. And Patrick Ricard, he can catch too. Um, but I was thinking, all right, I guess they're they getting ready to move on from him. But they didn't. They didn't. And when you think about it, it's like they drafted a fullback. Fullback, you, you don't got to draft fullbacks, but they drafted a fullback, and they ended up cutting them. So it's like with the Baltimore Ravens, everybody got their own story. Each of these draft picks have their own story, and each of these draft picks have something that I feel like we all expected them to turn into. We all expected them to blossom into eventually, not necessarily right away, but eventually. But it just it didn't end up working out for whatever the reasons were. So we'll see what happens in the future. Uh, we'll be extra, extra paying attention to Eric DaCosta and his fifth round draft picks because that seems to be ooh, the danger zone right there. Maybe you need to just trade all of them. Trade all them fifth round. That's probably why he used to trade all them fifth round picks. Because remember, for Marcus Peters, traded for fifth round pick. For Calais Campbell, traded fifth round pick. So maybe that's why he's been getting rid of them because he's like, you know what? I don't know what to do with these things. So let me part ways with these fifth round picks so I can use them for better resources. So Eric DaCosta, you... You trade them fifth-round picks away. Get rid of them. 
Because we don't need you drafting in the fifth round no more, my friend. We don't need you doing it. Just just go ahead and trade him away for a quality player, and then Ravens will be A-OK. -okay. But team, keep it clean. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Hey, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Turn your notifications on so you don't miss anything. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And just unfortunately, like Caillou Blue Kelly is when it comes to being a Baltimore Raven, we out. <laughs>